Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about a product that could be the demise of Victron Energy. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And I'd love to hear in the comments your opinions whether this product could be the product that demises and the, it's a fall from grace for Victron Energy. Now, what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to explain some of the things before I get any start, explain this new product that I think could be the demise of Victron Energy. One of the big foundation problems with Victron is actually design principles. Now, look, this is not something I suppose no one's ever thought about this. <laughs> so uh, it's not just Victron themselves, but the way an off-grid system works and the way it's designed, and this is more for parallel and bigger systems. Now, a lot of people over the years I've dealt with want multiple inverters. So they want to have two inverters or three inverters in a three-phase situation from Victron Energy. Now, the problem when you have multiple inverters in a system, people think, oh, it's going to be more reliable. That is true. But if one fails, we still require to reprogram it. So if you get two inverters and one fails, we still require to reprogram that inverter. When it does fail, and it's really hard to program inverters to get one working all by itself in a failure blackout situation when you know we need power to get the internet so I can remotely log in and program it. Unless you as the customer have been trained and educated and you know how to log in and reprogram that to get that system working. So that's a bit of a downfall with Victron. Now, what's happened more and more over the years, we've seen a lot more three-phase systems and systems get bigger and bigger and bigger. And one of the things that's held back with Victron and a lot of the other off-grid products, you know, Selectronics is the same, is the limitation per phase. If you have a three-phase house and you want three-phase loads and you put an inverter on each single phase, the problem that happens, you're limited to the size of inverter per phase. So... Just as an example, if you get a 5 kVA inverter on each phase, from a single phase point of view, you can only use 5 kVA per phase. So if you have, you know, the kettle or jug, toaster, you know, boiling water uh, on one phase, and then you turn the air conditioner on that one phase, you're going to have a blackout. So it's really important that traditionally in a Victron three-phase system, your, your phases have to be really well balanced to make sure that you've got on one phase, certain items, and then the other phase. So when you turn all those things on, each inverter on the single phase loads are supplying those demands. So that's been a bit of a downfall. And the same thing as well, if one of those inverters fail, you still don't have a backup for single phase. And then you could have two inverters on each phase. So you'd have six inverters in total on the three phase system. And still, if one of those inverters fail, the system requires reprogramming back to be able to work in your situation to give you power. So that can be very complicated. And also it's not very nice and it's stressful to do when there's a blackout situation. It's always when it's raining. So this can be a really unreliable system. And this is not just picking on Victron in general. It's just the way the industry has actually designed systems. And I suppose one of the other things that's sort of really come over the years is, and I know there is an argument between going in all in one unit and having everything separate. One of the things with Victron Energy, as an example, is having, you know, you look at all these things in this picture, you require an energy meter and your monitoring and then your inverter, your MPPTs, an AC couple inverter from someone else. So there's a lot of different things required to go in and make up a system. And there are benefits that, you know, don't get me wrong, one of the biggest things I've seen fail over the years is actually the monitoring. Um, the little Raspberry Pis is probably the biggest failure I've ever seen in any off-grid product that's been out and available on the market. It's not just Victron. Everyone's monitoring that you see in your grid connect inverters, the screens fail and all the little displays fail. That's across the industry, it's been a really big thing I've seen over the years that's it's failed and, and let everyone down. And you'll see a lot of inverters these days are not offering screens because they're the biggest failure point. And that's why they're removing them and letting people apps. Me personally, I hate the screenless stuff. I love walking past my inverter, pressing a button and seeing what it's actually doing. You know, I've got this here. I'm actually trying to, I love the Victron color control display and this new product I'm about to dive in and talk about. I'm going to work out how to make it work on the Victron. So um, let's go. So I'm going to dive into this product and let you know. So just a bit about my background. I do a lot of research and development for companies. So companies send me products. We get them here in the Bat Lab. Um, I haven't done this for a few years. We have been doing it. I haven't really shared this information because a lot of the products I've been testing over the, over the years has all been under NDA, so non-disclosure agreements. I've been having some fun stuff at the moment. I've been working with sodium iron batteries. A lot of people that have done reviews on sodium iron out in the marketplace have actually got it wrong. Uh, and when I say wrong, they probably don't understand the technologies that's been created to work with that technology to make it work correctly. So I'm a really big fan of sodium ion batteries, really sustainable. I've had a really great experience with them and working behind the scenes and understanding the inverters and the technology that actually make the batteries work and come to life 
That's been the game changer and why the companies I've been doing the research and development with and using their battery technology, that's why I see sodium ion being such a superior product out there to lithium. And we don't need to go make whole new big huge factories out there to make new manufacturing facilities because with the sodium ion products, they can actually just be made with a patent with the company I've been working with. They can be made on the same production line as a typical lithium battery right now. So let's go now. I'm going to share with you this new product that's going to be game changing and potentially this is going to be the demise of Victron Energy. Now, when I say this product is going to be the demise of Victron Energy, I'm actually not more talking about this Sygen store product from Sygen Energy. This is an amazing product. And what I love about this, and I see the whole industry, I think is going to follow this. And I think with Victron, if they don't chase and start thinking and looking like this, it's going to be the demise of them. And they're going to fall from grace. And they're probably not going to be the largest off-grid reseller in the world. And I want to show you the way these guys think. I'm so excited about this product. And I can't wait to get the test unit here in my house here to do some demos and show you guys all about it, how it works. And I'm going to talk you through some stuff and how they've designed this and why I'm so excited about it. So they say it's a five in one. So this is what the product actually looks like. So down the bottom, these are all the batteries. And this is the top, this is the inverter. What I'm really excited about this. So whether you're buying a five kilowatt single phase or a 25 kilowatt three phase, the inverter on top is physically the same size. It looks identical. It does not change. One really good thing about this product, if you're a grid connected customer and you want to add batteries in the future, you can buy the inverter, put it on your wall at a discounted rate and it's software locked. So you can't get access to the batteries. So your upfront cost is cheaper. Then in the future, if you want to go ahead and put batteries in with this product, you just pay the fee. It gets unlocked as the software unlock gets unlocked. And then you actually get access to having an inverter. So it's pretty cool. So it's pretty cool that, that 5 to 25 kilowatt is all in that one inverter in top. The other really good thing about it, I know Victron are doing a lot of EV charges and stuff at the moment. One of the big downsides with the EV chargers is they're limited to the charger in the car. So if you get a most EV chargers in single phase, there'll be 7.2 to 11 kilowatts, probably the biggest single phase EV chargers out in the market. The problem with 11 kilowatt charger, if you do have a Hyundai or a, a MG, you're limited to the onboard charge of the car. So they actually don't have 11 kilowatt charger. So you brought 11 kilowatt charger, it doesn't have it. What's amazing about this Sygen Storm, whether it's a single phase or three phase makes the difference here. If you have a single phase, it actually has a 12 kilowatt DC charger. So that bypasses the onboard charger in your car and you've got a 12 kilowatt DC charger. The three phase unit has a 25 kilowatt DC fast charger. So these are actually bypassing the onboard charger in your car and going direct to batteries. So it's going to plug in, you've got a fast charger. The other amazing thing about that there is actually got a bi-directional charger. So it can actually take vehicle loads. So if you're off grid and you want to buy an EV and you want extra battery storage, the amazing thing about this here is you could charge your batteries full of a day, you know, then charge your EV up run around, go get the kids from school, plug the car back in. You can set with the app and say, hey, don't discharge, don't charge the car tonight, only use the cards of discharge if we need extra battery capacity. So it's actually using your vehicle as and that extra storage and integrate it with your system. And I'm really excited about that. And you're simply just buying a cord. So if you buy this inverter, put it in the, in the batteries and you've got this in your house, in the future, decide, hey, Mike, I want to add an EV to my life. It is literally just buying the cord accessory plugging this inverter and you've already got that DC charger. The way they've designed this, everything's on one bus bar. So it all works together. So the bus bar is inside where all the DC connects. So all the battery DC voltage, the solar PV voltage, so, and also all your solar's going this. It all connects inside of that bus bar. They're using very smart technology with DC to DC converters to get all that energy and shift it around the way that you want it uh, in your life to be able to do this in an all-in-one unit, which is great. So I'm not really going to talk into the PV. You can shove into it. That's a pretty standard feature. You can shove solar panels into it, which most of these inverters you can do these days. Now, what I want to talk about how this is designed and why I think just the thinking of this is why it's going to be the demise of products like Victron out of the marketplace. And at the end, I'm going to tell you my opinion of the downsides I think about this. I'm going to tell you all the exciting stuff, and then I'm going to go into the things I don't like about all-in-one units. Now, I think this is the key here to the thinking behind how they've designed this system. And this is why I think the demise of Victron is going to be all around about the thinking. If Victron don't change the way they think and how systems are designed and work, this is what's going to bring them undone. This product here is what's called Sygen's Gateway, and this is with the game changer. So how this works is it goes on the wall. So all the individual batteries and inverters, they feed into this product here. So the central point of failure, I suppose, in this situation is going to be this product here. So if this fails then you're out of action with all the rest of your products, um, as far as what I can tell so far.
because all the inverters feed into this one centrally. So yeah, let's just say you've got stacks of batteries, you've got a five kilowatt inverter of them. You just say you've got two inverters. And what happens if one of the inverters fails, because the other inverter from the top of it's feeding AC over into this box, you will still have half your usable capacity. So it's pretty simple. There'll be a notification sent through to your installer, through to yourself saying, hey, one of your inverters has just died. You're still going to have power. So you're going to have half the amount of power that you would normally have. But the reality is with a 5K inverter, your lights are still going to run, your TV is going to run, your fridges, your internet, all that stuff's going to run. You're going to have power while the installer gets a new one sent out under warranty to be able to come out. It's going to give that little bit of time to get that sorted out, um, which is pretty exciting. But let's talk about three-phase and what I love about three-phase. Three-phase is becoming more and more common. Now, with three-phase, one of the biggest problems with three-phase, like we talked about before with the Victron, is you, if you've got a five kilowatt inverter on every single phase, you've only got five kilowatt single phase backup. Now, what's really good about these products, and I actually can't find the exact number, with these products, if you've got a 15 kilowatt inverter, what it'll actually do, it'll actually allow unbalanced discharge. So just say, for example, and like I said, I can't find the exact number right now, but just say you've got five kilowatts in each single phase and you've got a 15 kilowatt three phase inverter, what this will allow to do, if one phase is pulling more than the other, it'll actually shift some energy from the other two phases over to the other single phase. So it'll allow you to turn six, seven kilowatts on, maybe up to about 10 kilowatts. I really need to dig in and find the numbers. I can't sort of find it anywhere online at the moment of how much that number is exactly. And I'll talk about the SunGrow. I know the SunGrow have like a um, 70 or 80% phase imbalances. So, you know, a 15 kilowatt inverter, you can put 10 kilowatts in one phase. You know, if Sun grows on that for a long time, I don't see why these guys would actually do, would do less than that. Um, I still have yet to find probably a downfall of this product. I've been looking hard and trying to find out what's the problem with it. So it's got some really amazing features. One of the other biggest major features that I love about this product. Now, I've been doing off-grid solar systems for 14 years. One of the biggest things that we've done over the years, and the problem that we've had is a Tesla, you can't shove a generator into it. Most of the grid connected hybrid systems will not take a generator. Now, SolarEdge has just released some platform and they can take a generator. And with SolarEdge for years, you could actually have a generator um, and they do some reprogramming. In certain situations, the SolarEdge will work. Now they've actually finally come out with a product when the grid's available that you can have a generator in there. I'm not actually quite sure how the SolarEdge product works. I'm going to look into that and I'll maybe do a SolarEdge comparison versus Sygen Energy, get understanding. But with the side install, what I love about it is you can have the grid plugged into one side and the generator into the other. Doesn't matter how prepared you are, how much battery storage you've got, how much solar you've got. When it's raining for a couple of days, all you can really require, rely on is a backup generator to keep you going and keep the lights on. So with what we've done over the years, because where we're located, most of our customers, you know, a lot of our customers have cool rooms and fridges and all this sort of stuff that if it, you know, if they lose power, they're going to lose all that food. A lot of people live on the farms and it's a lot more of a loss than just losing power for a couple of hours or a couple of days. It's so important as all that hard work has gone into grow those animals and store that food will be out the door if they don't have reliable power. So we've always had to have a system that takes a generator backup. Now, they do have two models and I don't know whether it's a software lock thing, um, but literally you can have the grid connected into one side and then you have an input for a generator. So in the city, if you live in the city and you have one of these installed, you can just plug the generator in a blackout situation, go down to Bunnings, grab a generator, plug it in. You're going to be able to charge your batteries up when it's raining or they prolong blackouts, which have been happening more and more frequently. So I think it's really important to have a system that takes a generator. Now, to talk about the downsides and what I don't like about these products, honestly, there's really not much. I've sort of I'm in two minds about this. Yes, everything from one manufacturer is a lot easier to deal with because there's no one to blame. I know like over the years, there's been an issue with LG and SolarEdge. Um, and LG blamed SolarEdge for blowing their batteries up. SolarEdge blamed LG. There was two different manufacturers trying to blame each other of who caused the fault. With having everything from one manufacturer and all in one, you've got that. I don't like the fact that you don't really have a choice of battery technology. Like I talked about before, I love the sodium iron products. I think they're amazing. Um, LTO is another favorite one of my products. And we can't use different battery technologies. You're sort of stuck with whatever the manufacturer is offering on that day. Now, these guys are offering an amazing cell. Uh, it's a 280 amp hour um, LiPo 4 cell. It's a really safe. It's got some really safe technology. They've even got fire extinguishers in the batteries. Um, these guys have thought of everything. It's a pretty amazing product. So there's really not much that I don't like about it except for the fact that you're dealing with one company for everything and you're relying on that one company. If something was to fail or that company failed, 
you know, you're, you're stuck with that one company. But the size of these guys, the companies that invested in getting behind them, and just the way they're thinking about things, I think they've really thought about everything. Now, even with the battery technology, they've actually tested these lithium batteries all the way down to minus 25 degrees. And that's another thing that I've seen on on with a lot of battery manufacturers here in Australia. There are certain batteries in Australia that their warranties avoid the minute we install them because they're not meant to go over 40 degrees ambient temperature. And that's potentially every day in Australia. <laughs> there's a good, there's some locations in Australia that the ambient outside temperature of a battery is going to be 40 degrees because it's not just about the temperature of the outside environment. The battery itself is going to create heat. The external heat from the outside is going to help push that battery temperatures up. And there are batteries sold in Australia right now. The battery warranty is pretty much void unless you're installing it in Tasmania. So something to think about. I'd love to hear in your comments down below whether you think this is going to be the demise of Victron, the thinking of how these guys are thinking about their products, or whether Victron's going to get their act together and they're going to start changing the way they think and design their systems a lot better, that they're more reliable in those off-grid situations. And in Victron's defense, very rarely have I actually had the Victron inverters fail in that situation. They are a really good, reliable product. Um, but I just see the way of these guys are thinking and moving forward. I think a lot of the industry is going to go this way. Uh, and one other thing, I suppose, with Victron that I'm really not impressed with at the moment, in Australia, they're actually, we can't use them and connect them to the grid as a hybrid product. Um, they have all these amazing features that we just can't use in Australia because Victron don't want to get the certification. So it's a bit disappointing with that there that we can't sort of sell the Victrons and supply them and install them to people that are connected to the grid. And I think companies like this that, you know, that product can be used on grid or off grid. A lot of installers, a lot of companies that say, hey, you know, we've got one product that's amazing that does everything we need. We're going to go down this path and supply this product. So, yeah, let's hope Victron get their act together, bring us an all-in-one, pretty cool, crazy-looking unit, um, and also get it certified. So and it's not just Australia. And I think in the UK and Germany, you can't use the Victron products. And if you're from any other country around the world, I'd love to hear in the comments below um, whether you can legally install Victron in, on the grid as a hybrid system in your country. So until next time, guys, stay energized.